sadly, uh, one of our speakers wasn't able to attend today due to family issues. Um, but yeah, but I will present for him since I know I happen to know him quite well. So parents, as far as humanity goes back, one thing is for sure, that is parents. And trust me, no matter how many generations you try to come back, your relatives would always have parents. So let's look at parenting in itself, how important it is and how much there should be. Intriguing enough, it changed with history. Going back in time, parenting was different. Education was different. Instead of your old mumbling Mr. Gray in biology class, you would have your father teach you family business. That being only if you're a boy. If you're a girl, you would be taught things like cooking, weaving, or cleaning the house. That resulted in children's options being narrowed down immensely. You would not have the option of selecting a course of study or place in profession in which you want to work. Now, however, we have schools, so we mostly learn away from home. That separation from home is smoothed out in a school society, yet nevertheless, school cannot become your home. That being said, school gives you a tremendous variety of choices. You can become whichever profession you want, be it scientist, artist, or even teacher. But if we look into our modern world, you would ask a question. If we really spend so much time in school, what effect do parents have on us now? They just seem like nice people that cook lasagna for us at home. <laughs> and although lasagna is important, parents do play a huge role in our development today. And once parents choose to have a kid, or in some cases have a kid accidentally, I know who you are, <laughs> who teaches parents how to be parents? Well, lucky for you, I am here today to do exactly that. In the present world, there are multiple ways of approaching parenting, and there always have been, yet now the separation of techniques is most evident. Think of the kids as a flame, and of parents as of hands around that very flame. Now, if the hands move too far away from the fire, the fire can expand and become uncontrollable, resulting in a kid giving no thought to rules or obligations. If you move the hands too close, there will not be enough oxygen for the flame, so it will suffocate, and, will n and the flame inside the kid will be extinguished. In other words, you can either not look after your kid whatsoever, if this came out of my womb doesn't mean I need to teach it mindset, or not let your kid make a single step without you knowing about it. As you can hopefully tell, this can and does have negative impacts on your children. There are, uh, th sorry. There are some advantages to the systems, yet the best approach to children is to mix a little bit of everything. But let's start with no control at all. This way, children learn independence in a very early stage of life. It is easier for them to make decisions and just generally lead an, an independent life in the same house as you do, T spending most of their time in their room or outside with their friends, appearing only to be taken to school or to a dinner. Now, however, with the lack of guidance from his or her parents, the child is more likely to make poor life choices, have a less developed moral and ethical system, as well as try drinking and or smoking at an earlier stage of life. Children that are left for themselves can also develop and get used to such things as depression and isolation. According to a study conducted by Dr. Laura Markham, a clinical psychologist, kids that are left for themselves are more likely to push the limits, have lower standards, and have a risk to their safety. But let's, look, let's take a look at the other side, a child that is very closely looked after. There's even a term for this, helicopter parents. And parents are com compared to helicopters as they constantly hover over their children. Contrary to the previous case, it is rather a challenge for children in such a position to develop a personality, as children in general tend to take over opinions and behaviors from their parents, rather than make their own, which can be both a bad and a good thing. But taking a look at the negative side, <coughs> developing interests can be harder, especially when parents want their children taking part in specific activities, such as play football, whereas a person really likes singing and music. Quite often is the case that parents turn towards more of the controlling side when they want to keep their children from making the same mistakes as they have in their childhood. It is true that this way, children are less likely to make those mistakes, but not learn from them, simply evade such. So also it might, although it might seem as a good intention, it can, prove, it can prove better to let children make mistakes so they can learn from them. But positively, the kids' morale and ethics <coughs> would be stronger, as well as, the, as well as the chances of depression are, are also very low, which was in fact proved by a, another study conducted by Stacey Lynn, 
uh, graduate from the University of London, uh, she had stated that self-esteem, self self-discipline, ambition, and emotional development are stunted without parental growth, or parental guidance. Implying the opposite, parents do affect us in a positive manner. Now, my parents are amazing people, especially my mom. And to, gi <laughs> to give you a little bit of context, I have a brother who is younger than I am by nearly five years old. And why I am so proud of my mother is that when I was eight, my parents divorced and uh, our mother, my mom kept us, taught us, and saw that we became the best people we could. Personally, getting there, I just need some time. But what she did is she melded both of the strategies above into a single balance, maybe sometimes leaning towards more of the controlling side, but balanced thing. And you, now that you know this, you have to understand that there's nothing a parent can do to have a perfect relationship with their children, nothing. It is rather based on trust and communication from both sides. Those two examples I've provided you with today are extremes, it's true, but doesn't mean they don't exist today. The best option is to, be, is to balance everything, be close to your child, but give them time and space to discover the world by themselves. It is also important to, develop, to establish a strong trust-based relationship with your child from a, a very early age. In some sense, I am lucky. My parents aren't too screwed up as some, but others might not have the same luxury and uh, have either too controlling or hands-off parents. In that case, it might be too late for you, but not too late for your children. Thank you.